going on guys? I'm really excited about this one. I've been trying to get my hands on a Kia Stinger for a while now, for the last couple of years since it came out. I actually drove it a couple of years ago at an event on a track, but that's like about five minutes worth of driving in between driving a bunch of other cars. And whenever I bring you guys reviews, I like to drive them for a full week and really get a feel for them. And that's what I've done this week. This week I'm driving the 2019 Kia Stinger GT2 rear wheel drive. Now let's jump into the trims and see exactly what all that means. All right, so the Stinger actually has a lot of different trims here. You start off with the base Stinger and you get a Stinger all wheel drive. Then you can get the Stinger Premium and Premium all wheel drive. Then you jump into the GT trim. And this can also be had in rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. Next up is the GTS trim, which is a new special edition trim for the Stinger that has some unique colors and trim. Then you can get the GT1 or the GT2, which is the top of the line Stinger, and that's what we have here. And all of those can basically have all wheel drive or rear wheel drive. It's a rear wheel drive platform. We're driving the rear wheel drive. All right, with all that out of the way, let's take a quick look at the exterior design. Right up front you get these new LED bifunctional headlights with LED daytime running lights. You get dynamic low beam assist and auto light control. And I really like the design of these, it looks really cool. So this is definitely a Kia and this is definitely a Kia grill. For the GT models you get this unique grill with matching lower grill and you get this dark chrome trimming around the grill as well as other places in the exterior. And here's something I don't talk a lot about during my reviews, and that's the key fobs. I did mention the key fob in the Hellcat review because you get two. One is a red key, which is the one you want to drive with. I did mention the key fob in the Mazda 3 review because I thought it was way too big for the amount of buttons that you had. This one I'm mentioning because it actually feels pretty premium for a key fob. You get real metal and some nice like leather coating here, but the lock button it really feels like you're trying to uh, detonate a bomb or something. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh, and it really lets you know which button to hit for the lock. You don't have to, if you're locking it from within your pocket, you don't have to fumble for the right button. You just lock it. We don't have remote start here, but we do have a remote trunk pop, but you don't necessarily need it. You can also walk up to the back of the trunk and it will auto pop. We're gonna check that out right now as we check out the cargo space in this car. All right, so yeah, you get auto trunk pop, so all you have to do is walk behind the car. It'll beep a few times. And then you get a pop. And as you can see, you do get a good amount of space here. It's 23.3 cubic feet of storage space. You do get this, uh, you do get this built-in cover, so when you close the hatch, Nobody can see what you get back here. And you do have a 60-40 split folding rear seat so you can expand that storage even more. So the Stinger has two different engine options. The base Stinger and Stinger Premium that we talked about earlier have a two liter turbocharged engine. That engine pushes 255 horsepower and 260 foot pounds of torque. When you jump up to the GT trims, you get the 3.3 liter twin turbocharged V6 engine. That's what we have here. This thing pushes 365 horsepower and 376 foot-pounds of torque. Both engines are matched up with an eight-speed automatic transmission. About to see what those numbers really mean when we put it out on the road but first let's check out the interior starting with the rear seats so 
So the rear seats of the Stinger are a pretty decent size. You can definitely fit a full size adult here. I got plenty of knee room. The roof line is pretty low but it does slope down for that sport back but it's not just back here that the roof's low we'll talk more about that when we get to the front but being back here you do get a usb port and a 12 volt accessory plug you also get your own ac vents and control and new for 2019 you also get heated rear seats and you're definitely not being skimped out on materials being in the back these seats are pretty nice all right so moving along to the front seats you get this really nice red and black interior with these premium Napa leather seats here in this GT2 trim. This driver's seat is a 16-way power adjustable seat. The passenger seat is a 12-way power adjustable seat. You get two memory settings for the driver's seat, including the power tilt and telescoping steering wheel, and both the front seats are both heated and ventilated, which is a huge win for any car enthusiast in Texas love those ventilated seats we do have this leather wrapped gt steering wheel with red stitching it fits really nice in the hands and it has a flat bottom like the racing style to make it easier to slide in and out of this car our review vehicle does have the new sun and sound package which gives you this sunroof and a great Harman Kardon surround sound system. Behind the steering wheel, you do get analog gauges, but you also get a seven inch LCD screen for all your driver information and things like that. I also get a heads up display that displays in an amber color. It's really nice and bright, especially in the nighttime, but you don't just see your speed on there. You can see your blind spot monitors and other warnings and things of that nature. So comfort wise, obviously it depends on what you're used to driving. If you're used to driving bigger sedans or even SUVs, this might feel a little bit cramped to you. It feels a little bit cramped to me. I'm 6'1", but it's not really the interior pushing in on me. Like I have plenty of hip room, shoulder room. I have plenty of headroom, but the roof line comes down so far. Your visibility actually seems to be hampered. The A pillar is pretty big and seeing out the back with the sport back is pretty poor as well. But these are the sacrifices we make to drive something this nice. All right, so let's really quickly talk about the tech in this vehicle. Right up front, you get an eight inch touchscreen display with navigation built in. This is Kia's UVO system, which is a pretty good system. And it is touchscreen, so no fiddling with controllers down in the console. You do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, as well as Bluetooth connectivity. And new to 2019 is a wireless phone charger. You get features like push button start, you get blind spot monitoring, you get a radar guided cruise control, you get a lane keep assist feature, and you also get a 360 camera system, which again is a feature that I love. And not only does it come on when you reverse, but you can hit the button pretty much any time and activate that camera system so you know what's around you. We're in sport mode. We're gonna have to get onto this road and hammer down. It's a pretty quick car. I'll give them that. It's a pretty quick car. So the important thing is, how does this thing drive? This is a sporty sedan by Kia, but does it drive really sporty? And my quick answer to that is yes. This definitely wasn't a vehicle that Kia just kind of threw together. They had a purpose, they knew what they were doing, they wanted to make a great sports sedan. They even hired the lead engineer from BMW's M division to help get this thing produced. And it really shows. The weight of the steering is just perfect. Going in and out of corners, it feels rock solid. Acceleration from that twin turbo V6 is almost immediate. <laughs> but a lot of fun. You do have a mechanical limited slip differential in the rear for this rear wheel drive. And that just means that you can really put that power down to the road 
even in the turns, even in bumpy situations. You have a drive mode select where you can go from eco, comfort, to sport, to even a custom setting where you can set things like the steering to be sporty, the uh, acceleration to be sporty, but your ride to be comfortable. Or you can go full on sport and just have everything and just have everything sporty feeling. The GT trims do have a launch control feature. And I'll be honest with you, if you're not like Dodge and give me a one button launch control, I'm probably not even gonna think about it. It is a gimmicky feature and if you're looking for it and you really want to launch this car, I'm sure you can find it. But for me, it's just as fun taking a corner, slamming the gas down and holding on. Zero to 60 in this car with the twin turbo V6 is 4.7 seconds. So that's quicker than a lot of the competition, which we'll get to here in just a second. All right, well, we talked about it. I guess we should probably try a zero to 60 run. I don't always like doing zero to 60 runs, even in a sports car, just because it's kind of an arbitrary thing. I think that uh, 30 to 60 or 40 to 70 is uh, more relevant to everyday life as you're passing people on the highway or trying to get up onto an on-ramp. But let's do a zero to 60 pool right now. Dead stop. And let's go. felt longer than 4.7 seconds. I'll have to check it on the video, but uh, still pretty quick. And it pushes you back in your seats really hard. And the exhaust sounds great. I really like it. that out of the way let's talk about the price of this thing and what it competes with the base stinger with the 2.0 turbo engine is thirty two thousand nine hundred dollars the base gt is forty one thousand five hundred dollars this one that i'm sitting in now the gt2 with rear wheel drive has an msrp of fifty one thousand eight fifteen now i know what you're thinking that's a lot of money for a kia and it is a lot of money for a Kia. Of course, you do have things now like the Kia K900, which we reviewed a little while back. You have the Kia Telluride, which we drove at an off-road event not too long ago. I'll leave links to those videos down in the description if you're interested. But Kia has been making some pretty luxurious and pretty high-end cars with some big MSRPs on them, and they've been selling them. And the Stinger, the Stinger has been selling pretty well. And I think that has a lot to do with the price versus what it competes with. So if you're looking at something like a BMW 4 Series Grand Coupe, you might consider this. If you're looking at a Lexus IS or even a GS, you might consider the Stinger. If you're looking at an AMG C-Class, you might consider the Stinger. This also competes with the Audi A7 or S5. And I drove the S5 last year. Again, I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in seeing that video. But when I think about what this feels like to drive, it really reminds me a lot of that S5. And a lot of people have also compared this to the V6 Porsche Panamera. I'll give them that even though I've never driven one of the V6 Panameras. So again, when you take into consideration all of those different competitors, the price that they're at, and that this beats a lot of those in horsepower, in torque, and in zero to 60 times, the Stinger is a really good deal. That doesn't mean that it's flawless. There are things that I would change. As far as style goes, I would get rid of some of the fake vents. 
and tone it down a bit. The interior is really nice. The only issue I've had in here, again, besides the visibility, is that this uh, little pull handle rattles a bit. And because it's right here by your ear, it's very noticeable while you're driving. That could be because of abuse, because this is a press car and people abuse press cars. But if you own one of these for 30,000 miles, 60,000 miles, 80,000 miles, something like that's gonna happen anyways. But again, for a Kia, that's the only interior issue I've had. And after doing some research online of what other people complain about, the biggest complaint that I see is that people complain about the Kia dealerships themselves. Now it's been like 10 years since I've worked in a dealership. I used to work in a Suzuki dealership and there was a lot of bad talk about salespeople and overall practices that Kia dealerships had. I think they're doing a lot better in the market than they were but it is still kind of known as a inexpensive brand um, and they probably get a lot more lower end buyers. So that's what they're used to. And when you come in ready to buy a $50,000 car, you don't want somebody that's unknowledgeable, somebody that is gonna treat you like they treat uh, somebody in there buying a $16,000 car. That I understand, I think it's probably getting better. I know Hyundai, is having a big push. They had a big push for um, new models coming out in the last couple of years, and now they're focusing a lot on their um, on their dealerships and their experience there. So I'm sure Kia is doing something similar. All right, guys, and with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you uh, got any questions about the Stinger, please leave them in the comments down below. Let me know what you think about the Stinger, the GT, which one you would get, uh, what you think about the competition. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video, and as always, thanks for watching.